Ooh. I'm not sure I'm ready. I was hearing y'all sing behind me. Y'all were just good. Just good. Corey, thank you. Praise team, thank you. These folks have worked extra hard this week to just do great things. Let's let them know we love them. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. You folks have been so kind and so sweet. My 62nd birthday, I got to spend with my friends and family members at Stifton Baptist Church in Radcliffe, Kentucky. Happy birthday to you. Hey. Happy Amen. birthday to you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It has been an extremely happy birthday. It's been an extremely happy birthday for me and a happy birthday for me for, for, from Sandra also. She's had a great day today. And uh, I, you know I love your pastor. For 29 years, uh, I, Denver has been a dear friend of mine. And Denver and Debbie are just great friends of ours. We, you know, revival here with them or in Alaska with them, or in Hawaii with them. And I know y'all are thinking, you're still coming to Stifton? Yeah, I, I, I got to be honest with you. I loved Alaska. I went 21 times. It was great. First time I ever went was him. And then I went to Hawaii. I've been to Hawaii three times. And then they said, we're moving to Kentucky. And I went, we've hit the jackpot now. Amen. <laughs> That's my Arkansas happy dance. <laughs> Moving to Fort Knox. Huh? Uh, but I will tell you this. Th those other churches are good. And some sweet people in those other ministries. But nothing like you are. Nothing like your heart. Nothing like your, your precious love that you have for your pastor and... and the first lady, that's right. The first lady of Stitton, that's exactly right. And uh, y'all have added, I'm surprised at how many more people you have just in 11 months. You know, I was here in April last year, and you have added so many folks, 50-plus people. You keep doing that every year. You know how, you know how fast that, that goes and how fast you'll be growing? And I tell you, this is not going to be... Not going to be big enough. I know y'all are saying, well, yeah, these preachers, you know, they're all that pie in the sky, buy, buy stuff. And they, they all, I'm telling you, it's, it, we're, we're not, we are not serving a sick God. He's not sick. He ain't dead. He's, he, he's not even old. He, uh, he's old, but not in the sense that we are. Amen. He's still got strength. Some of you have asked some great, deep theological questions. And I want to ask, I've stirred up some things that I know that some of you have been asking questions about that I caused some confusion. Now, one of those things is buttermilk in the top of a gopher hole. Okay? Now, I, we have a saying in western Oklahoma that Christians ought not to be standing around with their face so long that it looks like they could stand straight-legged and drink buttermilk out of the top of a gopher hole. All right? Now, does that make sense? That means if you're saved, tell your face about it. Amen? Yeah. You don't not to be able to stand, have a face so long you stand straight-legged and drink buttermilk out of the top of a gopher hole. See that? And by the way, the gophers are about to take, take, carry us off in western Oklahoma. They, uh, somebody has prayed for the gophers, and it worked. They are uh, amazing. There's more gophers now than there are cattle. And, uh, because I think the gophers are getting some of the cattle. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for your kindness. It's always a highlight of our life uh, to be here with you. And this week has been extra special. They even had a birthday cake for me down in the Fellowship Hall at dinner time tonight. And uh, that's just so special. I'm thankful for that. I, I am 62. I'm much younger than your pastor. So, because he was 63 in November. 
so I'm, I'm about 14 months younger than him. Do you know, I mean seriously now, listen to me. Are you all out there? All right. Do you know how special you are to the Lord? No, 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 uh-uh. I'm not talking about Stithen Baptist Church now. I'm talking about you. Do you know how special you are to him? You. Not just you or you, you, but you, 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 you. Amen. You are extremely special to the Lord. When when I was younger and we all heard this, you know, there's always been any time any young man was had any kind of gift of preaching at all in the last 75 years, uh, someone would tell him he's going to be the next Billy Graham. And I heard that a few times. You're going to be the next Billy Graham. And I said, Lord, uh, can I be the next Billy Graham? And you know what he said to me? No. I don't need another Billy Graham. I need a Bobby Boyles. He said, I already got a Billy Graham. Billy Graham did what Billy Graham's going to do, but I got to have Bobby Boyles do what he's going to do. Because... And it's the same with all of you. Some of you here tonight think, well, you know, I just go to church. I don't do much. Uh-uh. There's no such thing as a Christian who doesn't do much. Now, you may not do much, but you're fixing to do much. Okay? Because he made you for a specific reason. God didn't just save you because he thought you were cute. That's obvious for some of you. Amen? Yeah. He made you because you... You, 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 each one of you has a specific purpose in the body of Christ. And if you don't do what you're made to do, it don't get done. So to quote my favorite philosopher, get her done. Amen? Now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. We're going to go two places tonight. We have made it to the 6th chapter of Joshua. So go to Joshua chapter 6, and then I didn't give you this one. (laughs) Brother, he is so good. By the way, guys in the sound booth and in the video booth, thank you. You, you, I'd like to take these guys with me. I do not have gifted guys like those. I need them both. I've made them an offer. I have made them an offer. (laughs) They're good ones. I'm sorry, William. But first, first Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, and then Joshua chapter 6. You know what First Thessalonians 5, 18 says? I'm not going to turn there. I got it memorized. It says, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Yeah, I like that. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Meaning, whatever you are, he made you. However you are, he made you. Whatever you lack, he made you without that. Whatever gift you have, he gave you that. He has fashioned you and designed you specifically to fit his will and his glory in his body. So, don't you be sitting there thinking, well, I don't play guitar. So, I can never be like that. I'm not worth much. I don't sing. So I'm not worth much. I don't play bongos like Carl or have a big booming voice. I can't play like, like, who? Yeah, y'all know all of them, don't you? Uh Uh-huh. Jeremy. Oh, don't be saying that, that I can't do this, I can't do that. He didn't design you to do what you can't do. He designed you to do what you can do. Okay? And you got to do it. Now, he, there is no such thing as the gift of pew percher. Okay? He did not build you to be a pew percher. Now, I, I, <laughs> Dr. Criswell used to tell a story. Remember the story Dr. Criswell used to tell? He, he would tell a story that said uh, he was preaching on the gifts of the Spirit one time. And a lady came to came to him and said, Dr. Chris, well, I, I only have one gift. I only have one talent. 
And I want to use it at First Baptist Church in Dallas. I want to use my talent at First Baptist Church in Dallas. And he said, well, dear lady, tell, tell me what your one talent is. She said, I have the gift of criticism. I, I have met way too many people with the gift of criticism. Amen? You know what Dr. Criswell said to her? He said, dear lady, I think that's very scriptural. And I think you ought to do what the person in the Bible who only had one talent did. And he took it out and buried it. Amen? <laughs> there, there is no such thing as the gift of criticism. There's no such thing as the gift of pew percher. But you are made fearfully and wonderfully exactly like he wanted you to be made. Now, oh, you say, well, I, I'll break me some Jack Daniels every now and then. That means God made me do that. No, I'm not saying he made your sin. I'm saying he made you in his image to do what he wants you to do in his body. And you don't need to be sitting around and saying, I can't, I can't, I can't. Because you can, you can, you can. Right? All right. Now, go with me to Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6 is a good one. We've been working our way this far all week long, and we have gotten down to it tonight. Joshua chapter 6 verse 1 says, Now Jericho was straightly shut up <laughs> because of the children of Israel. <laughs> none went out and none came in. You know why? You got six million Jews camped in your city park. You tend to be a bit tense. Especially because they don't have a city themselves. And they have somehow drawn a special interest in your city. And the Lord said unto Joshua, see? <laughs> Stop right there. Did you hear what I just said? The Lord said unto Joshua, see? <laughs> you, you see that? There's a comma there. The Lord said unto Joshua, See, does the Lord ever say to you, see? He does, because quite often he outperforms our expectation, and he has to say, see? <laughs> Got it, now get with me on it. The Lord said unto Joshua, see, I have given unto thine hand Jericho. In other words, they're afraid of you, Joshua. They're scared to death. They're not letting their gate down even to go rabbit hunting in the snow nowadays. <laughs> And the king thereof also, and the mighty men of valor, none of them are going anywhere. Verse 3. Now he begins in verse 3 to give instruction to Joshua and the people on how they are going to get the victory in Jericho. I want you to watch this. And you shall compass the city, all you men of war... Go round about the city once, thou shalt do this for six days. And seven priests shall bear the ark, the seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. How about right there? You, you, you got it, William? Isn't that good? William showed up with a shofar, to, shofar tonight. That's a, that's a ram's horn trumpet. <laughs> I, I, I think I surprised him. Anyway, you shall blow with the trumpet, and it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. Then when you hear the sound of that trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat... With the people shall ascend every man straight before him. You know what that means? These walls are 30 feet high and 18 feet thick and they're 20 to 30 feet apart. Now can you imagine the ceiling in here is probably not quite 30 feet high. Pastor, you know how high it is? Close to 30 feet right there. So if you're standing on the ground and it's, it's right up there above those lights, the ceiling, 30 feet. And then it's 18 feet thick. Okay? That's about the thickness of these pews in the middle here. Now you got that thick, that high, another space that thick, that high. And you blast with the ram's horns. See the picture there? That's an actual photograph in Joshua's day. Take it, taken with a, a, an iPhone 20. <laughs> yeah, minus 20, man. 
Yeah. However, think about that. Now, if all of that stuff is there in front of you, see those two walls? If all that is there in front of you, how is it going to fall down flat? Now, it might all crumble and fall all to pieces, but there's still going to have to be a climb. You know, we live in Oklahoma where we have big, bad, and I mean big, bad with capital A-D, tornadoes. And I mean they will make you run and hide, okay? You can tell somebody's raised in Oklahoma, but they say, bad tornado coming, bad tornado coming. They all run out in the front yard trying to find it. <laughs> yeah, there's no, <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> and when a tornado comes and tears something all two pieces, it, it's a big pile of rubble. It's never flat. It's piled up high. Looks like bulldozers came through and shoved stuff up into big piles. Well, the Lord didn't say it's all going to be disabled and crippled and crushed in front of you and you're going to have to climb up in it. He said it will fall down flat to the point, verse 5 ends with, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. That means you're not going to have to climb. You go straight in front of you. Even though you ascend, what used to be high is now brought down. See, that's part of the prophecy. You walk right straight in there. Well, isn't that pretty good now? You know the first thing I asked in my mind when I first started reading this passage of Scripture? Lord, the power of God's doing that. No doubt in my mind or your mind either one. It's not the blast of the trumpet that does it. It's not the, the ark that does it. It's, it's not the mighty men in valor who are walking in the front that does it. It's not the shout. It's the power of God that does that. How come God doesn't just do it while we're still over here in the camp. You know, some of us ask that question. Well, Lord, we, we know that you give mighty things and you do great stuff. Well, won't you just do it? We'll believe you. You know what? God does not do mighty things without using people to do mighty things. He uses people. God can do that. God can crush Jericho and there'd just be a big poof of dust out of both sides. And they could have just walked right past it. But God didn't choose to do that. God chose to gather up four different groups of people, and it includes everybody. Now, what are those four different groups of people? Number one, the mighty men in valor. Those are the warriors, the stormtroopers, the guys that are going in the front. Let's call them troopers, okay? Then the next guys are the fellows with the seven trumpets, right? So we got troopers and tutors. They got toot them horns, right? We got troopers, tutors. Who's next? The priests carrying the ark. Toters. <laughs> troopers, tutors, toters. Uh-huh. And then everybody's got to shout, and then what do they do? Walk right straight in. Trompers. We got troopers, tutors, toters, and trompers. Can you say that with me? Troopers, tutors, toters, and trompers. Got them? Troopers. That's the mighty war men. Tutors. Trumpet players. Okay. Toters. Who's that? The guys carrying the ark of the covenant, the presence of God in the middle of the people. And then trompers. So, troopers, tutors, toters, and trompers. All four. You, 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 some of you preachers need, uh, need points for your sermon. There you are. Troopers, tutors, toters, and trompers. Right? Now, God said... Boy, William, that's good. I had never seen that written. I'd done it different if I'd have seen it. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm joking, brother. Troopers. They're the, so, so you know that some of the guys with the trumpets are looking at those uh, mighty warriors up in the front. And those guys, they're saying, gee whiz, man, I'm just a trumpet player. How, I sure wish I could have carried one of those big shields or something. You know, I, that, those, man, those, the, the trooper guys always got flat bellies. You know that? The troopers, the, the, the mighty men in valor's always got a big set of shoulders and a flat belly. And, and boy, I wish I was one of those guys. And you know what the troopers are thinking? They're looking back and saying, my mama tried to get me to take piano when I was a kid. And I wish I'd have been a shofar player in the jazz band. 
They were all thinking, well, you know, we'd, this would be better if I was back there where they are. I like that. You know, the main thing about the troopers, they're, the, they're going to be throwing dirty dishwater off of that second inside wall, that high one, and it's going to fall on them troopers first. And they're going to want to be back where the tutors are. And the tutors are saying, hey, you know, it might be good to be back there under the Ark of the Covenant because that Ark of the Covenant is the presence of the Lord. Surely they wouldn't throw dirty dishwater on the Ark of the Covenant. And so those guys are thinking, I wish I was playing a trumpet or something. And then you know what? There's thousands and thousands of people in the back who are saying, I don't get to carry nothing. I don't carry no shield. I don't get to carry no trumpet. I don't get to carry no ark. I just get to be a part of this bunch of loudmouths that shout. <laughs> I, I want to be a trumpet player. I, I'm going to go home. You see what happened there? God says, I'm going to use every single one of my people to do something totally unexplainable. Something completely supernatural. But he doesn't do it by himself. He does it with his people. Troopers, tutors, toters, and troppers. The seventh Day they encompassed about it seven times. That means they walked around it seven times. And suddenly the trumpets of ram's horn began to blow loudly. And when they did, the shout came from all of the people. And the walls fell down flat. And the miracle of God came because everybody, everybody, every single body did their part. Now listen carefully to me. I think God has got an unexplainable thing in store for you. Now, I've not said this. My wife has heard just about every message I've done in the last 20 years. I've not said this to anybody. I think Stithen Baptist Church is positioned to do something that the rest of this country will say, Wow. Woo! I didn't think they could do it. But it takes everybody. 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 For in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Everything. Everything. Well, I don't have an education. In everything give thanks. Well, I, I'm not as young as I used to be. In everything, give thanks. My back's not as strong as it used to be. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. He has made you what you are for such a time as this to amaze the world with what He can do through all of you. All of you. A-L-L. -L. You, you know what that means? All? A-L-L. -L. It means all. Are you with me? Now, what do you mean, Brother Bobby? Well, I, I'm not sure, but I know he got something coming. Well, do you think any one of them could have torn those walls down like that? No. Do you think any thousand of them could have torn the walls down? No. But all of them together did what they're supposed to do. And God infused. In, infused. That's a word, you know. Infused. My sister had to have an iron infusion last week. And it took five hours to get her so full of iron that she didn't need iron anymore. Infused. God wants to infuse your obedience. Every one of your obedience. And he will multiply the power that you might have on your own, and it will be something that only he can do, but it takes all of you to do it. Now you're saying, what has Pastor Denver told him? Nothing. I don't know what it is, other than I've seen this man resurrect some churches from the dead that didn't have near the heartbeat that you got. I've seen God do some things in Alaska and Hawaii and just, I, I, I honestly, I prayed that he could be on my staff, that I could somehow work for him someday. But I know God put him here. 
And I think it is because of this time, this day, that he's going, God's going to do something unbelievable in the midst of all of you. Now, well, what does that word let be? Well, I, I wish I knew. But I know this. When God shows up, he shows off. And shows out, or whatever you want to say. And when he does, this place will be packed. Packed. And all you've got to do is do your part. Well, well what's coming? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. Is it money? I, I don't know if it's money. Is it people? I don't know if it's people. I don't know what it is. Is it a cure for cancer? Maybe. I, I don't know. I don't have any idea. I know this. It doesn't matter how many millions you need. Don't worry about it. You just do what you can, what your part is. It's a tutor, toter, tromper, mm, tester, whatever the other guys were, okay? <laughs> do your part, and you do your part. God infuses and multiplies all of it, all of it. Oh, I know. I hear you. I, I hear you right now. I, yes, Lord, I, can, I know there's thinking that, Lord. Some of them are saying, well, I, I'm not rich. I can't give much. He's not saying everybody's got to give much. Not everybody's got to honk that horn. You've got to give what you can. Well, I, I can't hardly walk anymore. Well, but I tell you what, you can walk to the prayer bench, can't you? Well, uh, I, I can't sing. Oh, no, 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 maybe you can't. It doesn't. Quit telling God what you can't do and start telling the devil what you can do and get after it. Amen? Amen. Now, listen carefully to me one more time. You are the key. I don't mean all of you. I mean every one of you. You're the key. But without you, it will not happen. Without you, it will not happen. But with you, each and every one of you, whatever little you've got, whatever talent, whatever gift, whatever joy, whatever victory, whatever shout that you've got left in you is what God wants you to give. Amen? Amen? You hear that? I'll close with this illustration. And I want you to, I want you to get with God tonight in this invitation. All right? And we're not there yet, but you better get with God tonight because there's something coming there's a big crossing and a wall crumbling fixing to happen. And it's going to be a miracle of God that may change this whole nation. I'm praying that it starts right here. But it's fixing to come. And you're going to need to be ready. You're going to need to be out of bed. And you're going to need to be sanctified. Because tomorrow the Lord's going to do wonders among you. Remember last night? Every one of you. Every one of you. I have two daughters. We have two daughters and three sons. The girls are born first. Ashley is my oldest daughter. Ashley will be 39 in October. I can't believe I'm just a year away from having a kid that's 40. I know. Some of you say you'll survive. I, I believe it. She is a principal uh, at John Horn High School in Mesquite, Texas. 4,000 students. Okay. I love my daughter. She's got it happening. Her little sister is a PA in Galveston, Texas. I don't know where I went wrong on the Texas deal. <laughs> but Ashley, when Ashley was about three, uh, it snowed. We lived in Rogers, Arkansas. You know where Rogers is? Can you say Walmart? Yeah. We, that's where Rogers is. Um, we lived in, in Rogers in, in the winter of her third year she was three years old maybe fourth year but it snowed and uh, we were outside playing and, and she loved playing the snow and, and we did snow angels and all kinds of fun things and then I said Ashley come here and I was, I was messing with her I said I want you to do something for me okay watch this now you stand right here till I get back I want, you, I want you to watch my footsteps. And I took big old long footsteps way out there, several out there, got out there, turned around, and I went back stepping right in the same ones and got back to here. Now, Ashley, what I want you to do is I want you to step in my footsteps. She said, Daddy, they're far apart. They were. So she backed up and Got her a running start, and when she hit that first one, both feet slid out from under her, and she, boom, right on her tail. She said, Daddy, I can't do it. It's too far. I said, come here. Let me help you. 
And I took her and I stood her on top of my boots. And I had her throw her little arms back around me. And, and I said, all right, here we go. And I stepped way out there. And I'm holding her up each time. And the first step, she giggled. <laughs> it's a beautiful sound. I'm going to fall. I know you, you know you think I'm, I'm thinking of ruining you. The, the women are all worried about this set of lilies right here. But. <laughs> and then I, I took a second step, and she giggled again. And then I did the third step. When I did the third step, she said, Daddy, I'm doing it. I, I'm doing it. And then she stopped and said, no, we're doing it. We're doing it. You see, what looks impossible to you because the steps seem too far apart and the walls are too high and the river is too wide and the price is too high is only a small step for your Father which will carry you if you are willing to be carried on that journey. Amen? Now bow your heads, close your eyes, look into your heart. I'm asking you tonight, are you willing to be carried? Are you willing to be carried? I believe you are the key. But you got to be willing to be carried. We talked about troopers, tutors, toters, trumpers. Doesn't matter who you are, he's got a part for you. But you've got to be willing for him to carry you. Now that may mean he carries you past something, and you've got to put away that stuff that you can't do. And be willing to do what you can as he carries you into a mighty, mighty great revelation of himself for you. Right now, I'm going to ask. With heads bowed and eyes closed, that you just very quietly and very reverently, right where you are, just stand up. Everybody, just stand up right now, if you can. In a moment, I'm going to pray. And I'm going to ask you again to come to this altar tonight. And for the reason you're coming to this altar, tonight is to say, Lord, I'm willing to be carried. I'm not so concerned about what I can't do anymore, Father, because I know you've given me whatever infirmity I have, but you've given me whatever strength I have, and you're willing to carry both with me to victory. Are you willing to be carried? If you need to be saved tonight, Boy, get in on it. God's going to do some mighty things that may change America from right here in this building. Come and take the pastor's hand tonight and say those three words, I need Jesus. That's all you got to say. You can get in on it tonight by simply saying, I need Jesus. Those three words. You need to be saved tonight. Come take his hand and say, I need Jesus. But stiff that I'm challenging you tonight. Come to the altar tonight and say, Lord, I'm willing to be carried. Father, carry my weaknesses, carry my strengths, carry my insecurity, carry everything that I am, but I'm willing to be carried. Lord Jesus, we give this time, these moments to you. In Jesus' name, you step out and come to this altar. This is the Amen. time. Come on, as the music starts, you come. Hallelujah. Out.